Hey guys, what's up? Brandon here. I'm doing a seven part series on Tulsa area fishing lakes, the, the big lakes, the big main lakes that surround the Tulsa area. So if you're new to the area or you're on vacation or just want to know more about the, the lakes and what they have to offer, well, in these videos, I want to break down kind of what these lakes have to offer, mainly focusing on bass, but all species, um, kind of how they set up. I'm going to grade them, but, but ultimately just trying to help you figure out which lake best fits your fishing style. All right, Keystone Lake, it is located just west of Tulsa. It's about 15 miles west of Tulsa. And it is a little over a 23,000 acre lake. The interesting thing about this lake is because it's built on the Arkansas River. It's, it's actually where the Arkansas and the Cimarron River merge at the dam here. So it's a, it's a lake with a lot of flow. You look down at the dam, it's the top of the dam actually is at 771 foot and the top of the conservation pool is 723 foot which is a 48 foot difference um, and if you go to the top of the flood pool it's a 31 foot difference so this lake can fluctuate quite a bit um, i believe actually when it is at normal pool it is low i think this lake fishes pretty well and just sits pretty well when it's about i don't know six or seven foot high uh, it just puts a lot of things in play Okay, so as far as lake breakdown, um, you have the lower end, which is down here by the dam. And then the kind of the mid lake, I believe, is more west of that lower end, kind of up here in this area, which kind of, you know, the, the lower and the mid kind of mix, in my opinion. And I think the upper is anything really above this uh, 412 highway bridge up this way, up the Arkansas, and even over up the Cimarron as you get up that way, consider more upper, even though layout's a little different. As far as species on this lake, it's pretty diverse what it has to offer. Largemouth, crappie, white bass, striper, um, catfish, uh, paddlefish. And these paddlefish, this, or spoonbill, whatever you want to call them, are world record spoonbill. The, the, pre, the current world record is 164 pounds, which was caught here on this lake in June of 2021. And the previous record holder was also on this lake, and I think just a year prior when it got broke. It's been broken several times recently. Another cool thing about this lake is it's on the Arkansas River, which the Arkansas River is one of the few rivers that um, that allow striper to spawn. And they'll get up on these these shallow banks um, in the those cooler months, and you can catch them on top water, swim baits, jigging spoons, kind of a little bit of everything when they're up there feeding. And they get pretty big on this in this lake. If you aren't um, uh, and don't want to use a boat in this lake, you can also go down, down here below the dam. And especially when they're releasing water, um, a lot of the guys will, it's kind of shoulder to shoulder here, but they'll catch them in this, this release area, which is a pretty popular spot for catching big striper too. So I mentioned the sand for the striper, and this lake has a little bit of everything. Besides grass, most of these big Oklahoma lakes don't have grass, but um, this lake has a lot of bushes and because of its it's high most of the year it puts a lot of bushes in the water and kind of a flipper's paradise could be a little bit overwhelming because there's just so much but when it is high it just puts a lot of rock a lot of bushes a lot of structure in this lake now if we just jump down here i can kind of show you just one off the top of my head that i can think of zoom in here and you can see these foundations um, house foundations there's one out here one part of one here and one out here so there's just a lot of that kind of stuff in the water I mean you got a road that's coming goes straight down the water and it pops up there and the reason is because this town when it or this this lake when it was built it was actually built on they built it because of the Arkansas and the Cimarron which merged here but where they merged there was actually two towns the town of Keystone, which the the, the the lake got its name from, and then Appalachia, which is just across here. So you look at this, this topo map here. That's why all these foundations are out here. Most of them are deep. They're in deep water. Um, but if you go, this is the Keystone, and then you go across, and then you got more um, little, these all these red dots are structure in the water. You can see these old roads that go across here. You jump up here, and you see this, there's a pond here. This is the, the pond that's set behind the town of Appalachia before they flooded the lake. You can see the dotted line here, um, and then they flooded it, obviously it connected into the, with the rest of the lake, which just a lot of that stuff that's cool. And all through this lake, there's, you know, 
oil rigs, old oil rigs there in the water, just foundations upon foundations, just just a lot of good habitat that as the bass have um, kind of are started to use. As far as I know, there's no stocking report on this lake. They don't they don't stock it. Um, the the bags here, the tournament bags are, are pretty good. I mean, they're pretty consistent. And the jackpots, they're, they're never real big, they're never real small, they're pretty just consistent throughout the year. That's from, you know, in the spring to the heat of summer. And the tournament bags here, they're, they're not quite Grand Lake bags, but they are pretty close. And they, I mean, they, it puts out a good, good sized bass um, throughout the year. And so that consistency is, is big for me here. So areas to look for for fish around this lake. So starting off with striper, um, I look for those sandy banks, um, especially like in the late fall when those get up shallow. So really anything of this simmer on, the, the banks are pretty sandy. This area is really good because um, it's shallow here and then it's real close to deep water. So they can get out there, out there in that current and uh, get the oxygen and just slide off on deeper water if they need to, or they can slide up shallow and feed. There will be bass mixed in here. This is just a good area just because how it sets up with the, the river channel and then the shallow uh, bank here. Really, this stretch all the way down this bank, there's several spots. Um, for bass, what I look for in this lake is I don't really go much up the, the Cimarron or the Arkansas. I look more down um, kind of that mid to uh, lower end of the lake, anywhere around this the dam. Um, down through here, let me just zoom in, anywhere through here and then all the way down this arm and then down here the Salt Creek area. There just tends to be a lot more rock in this area, a lot more structure, rock, bushes, and less sand and mud, um, which obviously set up good for bass, uh, the points and everything. So just really anything off this channel here, these little Cuts are pretty good. Uh, obviously, you get in the structure, that's a little deeper water, but these little cuts. And then back here, there are just a lot of good depth changes. This is a pretty good big community hole on this lake right here. Um, this this point that stretches out because you got that those, that river um, that's winding through here. And this is all a real shallow bank with this these main creeks kind of merging. Um, this is just a good flat area on um, these points. A lot of white bass will be up here on these points here um, throughout the summer. Um, and then you just have good transition areas for bass, um, some little bit of a, some offshore spots um, in this area as well. That'll kind of give you a little starting point is uh, concentrate around those sandy shallow areas for um, striper and then look for the rocky bushier um, transition areas for largemouth. So overall I give this lake a solid B plus. All right guys, so the whole goal of this is to help you catch more fish. And if you're watching this and you have more insight or something else you can add, you fished this lake before, please leave that in a comment below so we can help as many anglers as we can. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you on the next one.